spent a few days in nature. Jeff has a couple kayaks, so we took some some kayaks around in the in the water. And um, Jeff actually rescued a bird. There was some some like fishermen, and and they had caught their line on this bird, and he was able to let the, free the bird and um, you know let him let him be a normal bird again. So that was kind of cool. It was like one of those videos you see on YouTube. Jeff was in there, wrapped the thing around this, this guy's beak and untangled him and, and the ha- he was a happy bird again. So that was kind of cool. But it was Absolutely awesome. Absolutely because I beat Patrick because he was like, he was going to be the hero first. And I was like, paddling. I'm like, no, I'm going to get, get <laughs> the glory on this one. Jeff had a motor on his kayak, apparently. Right. Um, cool. So yeah, we spent a little time. We, we spent a little time out in the bush made some made some hot dogs and, and burgers over the fire and uh, you know just kind of got back to neutral. I think it's important that you do this every once in a while, right? We, we get caught up so much in the daily grind of, of what we need to do um, with our business and, and sometimes we forget to take some time off. And um, Jeff has been a real big proponent for that with me because I, I have that same tendency and you know um, there's a lot of evidence that will show that, when you do that, you're actually more productive. So it's, it's not like you're losing that time and you, you get it back. So um, I certainly felt that way this week is a little, little more energy after taking a little break, taking a little breather. Um, cool. All right. So let's get into it. Last week, for those of you guys who did not see, um, I challenged Dave, who has, um, Dave, how long have you been in the group? Um, I... I myself have actually not been in it very long. Uh, my fiance Jill has started in JK about five years ago now this month. Um, but as I mentioned before, she just had to, uh, we both had life challenges. And so it really kind of got put to the back burner. Um, but the last year we really said, you know, we need to do what we can to build this business and work for ourselves. You know, we're, we're tired of working for other people, making them rich and their dreams come true and uh, us not having any, you know, even something simple like you and Jeff going kayaking with your wife. Uh, we just don't really get out. So I, it really resonates with me with what you said about needing to get out once in a while just to decompress, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So Jill been in for, for five years, which is um, about th- this April will be five years since I started this business model. And um, I know that we have, I don't know, three or 400 sites. You guys have been dealing with a lot of things that, that I didn't have to deal with. And I know that just based on, on some of our conversations between um, working jobs and some, some uh, health issues and stuff like this, at this, at this uh, like seven days ago, how many sites did you guys have live? Uh, we had three sites live. Three sites live. Okay. Yeah. So the challenge was for Dave and Jill to complete 10 sites um, by this meeting between, between last week's webinar and this week's webinar. Right. So, um, and as a reward, I was going to give a coaching call with um, where we do a little bit of role playing, talk about, um, um, you know, how we can be better salespeople as well as a f- four months free on the enterprise package to Dave and Jill. So their stuff is set to renew, I believe in October. So we're going to push that back four months for them if they were able to achieve this. So let's talk about the results. How did it go? How did it go for you guys? Uh, it, <laughs> it went pretty crazy. Um, you know, we've certainly been burning a lot of hours, you know, she's still working her day job. And so she would, come home between that and trying to do some acupuncture for people on the side to uh, bridge our financial situation that uh, she would come home and try and do what she could to help assist with like content and other things. And uh, me being out with a work injury, just been literally cramming 14, 16 plus hour days um, was a little easier in my earlier years, but not so much now. Um, So I'm kind of paying for it today, but um, feeling good about the challenge because, you know, I feel like we have accomplished more in this time, even though they're very rough. Um, they're not where they, we want them to be yet, but it was certainly a learning process, especially with uh, working under the gun. And um, 
with that said, we actually decided to push ourselves slightly more and actually have 11 sites built. Okay. Uh, and that was even with losing probably collectively two days from last week due to some medical appointments and stuff. So, okay. So effectively in five days, instead of seven, you guys built 11 sites where previously you guys had three. Is that correct? Uh, well, let me rephrase. Uh, we built 11, but when you mentioned about three, we then have a total of 14 now life yep. sites. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you, you've basically done um, almost, almost four times as many sites as you had previously, right? You added 11 from three, 12 would have been four times, right? So right. Um, awesome work, man. Congratulations. That is exactly what I was hoping would happen. I knew that it wouldn't be easy, but you see what's possible now, right? Like we see the, bar, the bar has been raised and it's not that every week you need to build 11 sites because there's obviously a lot more work that's going to need to be done to the 11 sites that you have built before they're going to be in a position to rank. We've got to get GMBs for them and, and this type of thing. But we've got a lot more shoes on the shelf, right? I know that um, we did this challenge. I, I have a big team behind me, but we had built the 10 sites in 20, 24 hours. It's, you know, I, I think I had 15 people on my team at the time. So uh, those 15 sites or those 10 sites, I think are now bringing in 15, 20, I, I don't even know. I, I would guess at least $20,000 a month. So this is what you have on the shelf now to kind of like work for towards, right? It's a lot more than three. And, um, you know, not all the sites that we build are going to turn into money makers right away. Um, I'd love to hear about some of the stuff that you learn. I know that there's probably some mental battles that or you probably had some limiting beliefs about your ability to do this that you, you now know is not true. Um, can you speak to that as well as anything else that you learned during this last week with this, with this challenge? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it, I, I think it's one of those things when, you know, for me, I've always been a perfectionist for things. Um, so one of the first challenges for me was getting over the idea of trying to at least meet the challenge where it is and knowing that things don't have to be perfect right now. They're super rough. Um, part of that was just not really having um, very good access to reasonable photos, especially for the two niches, um, which, of course, you know, we can go back. At least we've got some of this kind of placeholders. Um, but part of that was me just getting over the, the feeling of having to have stuff perfect and, and that kind of a thing. Um, you know, that... Um, just kind of trusting the process that some of the things that I've been reading about and educating ourselves on mm -hmm. is sticking as opposed to just feeling fear all the time that I can't do it, that she can't do it, you know, and, and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, no, it, it's, it's been a nice experience, you know, even despite the pressures and the lack of sleep and, and all that, that uh, we're really grateful for the challenge and being able to complete what we have so far. Right, right. And I know that, you know, um, maybe, maybe, maybe the motivation of the four months free was, maybe that was part of the motivation. And maybe part of the motivation was like jumping on a call and getting a, a little bit of some private coaching out of this. But I'll tell you, the reward that's, that's going to be a, a small in comparison to the reward for what you guys have accomplished. Because when these sites start to rank, let's say that, that each of these, and I, I know the niche that you're in. And um, I think when these things really start to rank, you're going to get at least a thousand dollars a month off of, um, off of this stuff, right? Based on, he sent me over the list of the sites. So maybe they're going to be 1500s, but, but let's just say they're, they're $500 sites. So that's like, six thousand dollars a month extra that that'll be coming in once you get these things ranked and, and I, I can almost guarantee you when you rank these things really well it's it's certainly going to be more than that and if it's if it's not more than that then you need to watch the video that i posted in here the other day about raising the rent because maybe it's going to it's going to be that you're going to have to start these guys off at, at 500 or whatever as it comes in but um that coaching call 
and um, the four months free is nothing in comparison to, I think the, the learning that you got from this, the realization of, of like, hey, it doesn't have to be perfect to get out there. You, you now, like now that you have these sites published, you have the opportunity to collect leads, right? That's, that's a fact yeah, that absolutely. didn't exist a week ago. And, and you don't, when you pick the right niche where there's a good um, ticket price, you don't need a lot of leads to justify them paying you money. They'll be happy to, right? We have a client that's happy to pay us, um, I don't know what it is, $9,000 a month. He's happy to pay us because it brings him a lot more than $9,000 a month. What's that? 9,500. 9,500. And we're about to bounce him up to 11K. That's right. Yeah. So oh. he's happy to pay that. It's, it's like, uh, it, it, it's expensive for him not to have that because he makes so much money off of that. And this is the same situation that you're going to be putting these people in, Dave, is, is um, you, you know, and like, you just need to go through now and start fine tuning these things. So tell me, Dave, you built these sites. I haven't had a chance to go through them all. Did you start off with, with two page sites? Is that what you did? The homepage and the contact page? Yeah. Yeah. That's where they're at right now. Okay. So within my agency, what we do is we have phases, right? So our phase one is getting the website live and getting a GMB. Okay. And I think, let me, let me just double check that. But, uh, and then we have phase two, which is like, let's get 10 pages on the site. So now what I want you to do, and this doesn't obviously need to be done by next week, but you like, let's move these things from phase one to phase two. So during this week, it should be all about getting GMBs. Like you, you obviously you want to uh, get the pictures, but let's get the GMB process started. So the two things that I would love for you to do with this is be making some posts on Indeed so that you can start to get some postcards in Craigslist. Do you want to get these things in the mail? I'd be paying $25 or something for this. Um, and I know that's you guys are, are uh, you guys are crunching your finances right now, right? You're, you're doing as much as you can to pay for this stuff. But I'll tell you, you spend this like $275 for $25 a GMB, 11 of them. Um, that money's going to come back to you. I, I promise you. You get those GMBs. You follow the training that we've gone over. Use the heat map. Use the different parts of this stuff. Get some, get, start getting some reviews to come in. That money's going to come back to you, right? And it's going to be worth way, way more than the $275 that you may have to pour to get this, this thing out there. Right, so um, that's would be what would be my next focus, and while you're wait, like it's going to be a waiting game. First, you, there's a little bit of work for you to do to get these GMB requests up there. So you're going to make the post on Indeed, make the post on on uh, Craigslist, and you know over the next week or so, hopefully you can start to send out some of those requests. And while you're kind of waiting on that, it's not it's not going to be a, a lengthy process from like, you know, it's not like building the 11 sites, making the 11 posts. You're going to make the same posts, It'll probably take you an hour or so to get all these things posted. And then you're going to be responding to these people. Um, if you know anyone in these cities, then like that, that's an easy way to avoid paying that extra. Um, but start to start to be doing some of these other things, right? Let's get the, let's start adding a couple pages to each one of these. Maybe you say, okay, this week, I'm going to get all these sites to have four pages. They all have two pages now. Or maybe I want to build one to have 10 pages. So keep on shipping away. You've got this train that you've put on the track now. Before, it was just like a bunch of pieces sitting in the junkyard. We've assembled it. We got it on the track. Now we got to start pushing it down the track a little bit, right? We got to get it. It's going it, to, you got to go through systematically and move this thing. So more pages. We can't get citations until we get the GMBs. So there's a lot of there's a lot of work that's hinging on the GMBs. So this is why I really like to prioritize getting the GMBs as quickly as possible. Like get let's get that process started because it may be we've got 11 of them. Maybe this week you can get three or four of them in the mail. If you get all 11, I would be surprised. It doesn't mean it's not possible. But then then the next week. Meanwhile, your domain is is. It's not brand new. I mean, it is brand new now, but it's not going to be as brand new next week and the, the following week. We've, we've got the clock started, right? So um, it sounds like you got some work to do with the photos, which uh, you've, but you, I think you know what you, you've got to do from here. 
And um, I wouldn't be so much focused on building out the new sites now because these ones are just like partially completed. Now it's like, give yourself a list, right? I gave you a goal that maybe you had to stretch to, to, to accomplish. It sounds like you had a lot of 14 hour days and you're dealing with like, I think back issues and, and stuff like this. So um, congrats, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm impressed. Um, I, I believed I like, I want to say I'm not surprised because I felt like you could do this if you just put your head down and, 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 and did the work, right? Now, like, set yourself a goal, okay? You don't need me to set your goal for you each week. Give yourself a goal that you're going to accomplish. And maybe it's not going to be based on 14-hour days because, look, if you're dealing with medical issues and stuff like this, then, like, maybe that's not even healthy. But uh, maybe it's an 8 to 10-hour days. If I do this, this is what I'm going to reach. And then don't let yourself slide on it, right? There was, a, there was a clean cut rule on this. And this is where a lot of people fail, I think, is when you go back to being your own boss and having your own rules, you can justify why we don't get, so, get to our goal. And, and that's okay, because you're not gonna get in trouble for it. You're not gonna look bad. You have no pressure from it. It's just you and Jill. That is a slippery slope. And I want you to be aware of that. I want you to say, this is where I'm getting and then just like this week, I'm going to get there no matter what, right? That's the attitude that we have. Set it so that it is maybe not quite as stretchy as this one was, but it's still a stretch. Push yourself to, to get to this. So, so work through this and say, look, I want to get this many GMB requests. You know, if it, it, back, to, back to that analogy that I always use where like if Jill is on the other side of a, a sliding glass door drowning in a pool, and the, you go to open the door and it's stuck, what are you gonna do to get to the other side of that glass door? If you take that attitude every week towards reaching these goals that you set, you're gonna notice your business is gonna blow up. Give it six months and I guarantee you, you're gonna have all kinds of stuff. It's that little voice in our head where, hey, it's okay because of this, or it's okay because of that. And then it just like doesn't get done. And then, you know, just that, that self-justification is, is, is a defeating thing. And we gotta be aware of that. So. Um, I'd love to hear, maybe you and Jill can talk and send me a message tomorrow. Like, Hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what I came up with for the week. And then write it down. If you, if you, if it's just an idea in your head, that's that, like, write it down where you can see it and, and like believe in it. Right. So all that kind of like vision board, dream board stuff, it's, it's based on that. It's like, Hey, this is what I'm committed to. I've, I've, I've put it out in the universe. If it's just in your head and you don't do anything with it, then there's like, it, it's almost like it wasn't ever a thing, right? So right. if you were to put it as a post-it and it's on your computer or it's on your mirror or it's on both, and, you know, and you're just like, this is what I'm going to. This is where my focus is, right? Then it, th you're going to start to get some momentum, man. And you need to do this every week. I think my wife and I, we have, we have weekly plans on Sundays, right? So you should, maybe you could plan it out of like, hey, this is what I'm going to accomplish over this next seven days. And this is, it, and, and you could, you know, I've mentioned this on a few videos back, like the goal setting, right? If you want to set your one year goal and work backwards, set your 90 day goal. And then like at 45 days, you should be halfway to your 90 day goal. If it's something linear, like, like for instance, like weight loss is pretty linear, right? If building, you know, putting more money in your pocket from building lead gens isn't necessarily, necessarily linear because like the first three months is all going to be about building and ranking. And then when we have them, we can start to like, accrue a lot of money really quickly so you need to you need to be the one that's making these rules though this i think if you can take your capabilities away from this that will be the most valuable part of this of this challenge not the four months free and the coat it's it's like the mental shift that you made because i know for me when i built those 10 sites i was at two thousand dollars a month right and four months later i was at four thousand dollars a month and then 12 months after that, I was at $40,000 a month, right? It was the mental shift. It took a moment to happen. It took a long time for me to arrive at the starting line to get that. But once I made that mental shift, it was like, it, it was a foregone conclusion in my mind what was going to happen. And I'm hoping that you see what's possible now. And I hope this is the beginning. I know that you've got some self-doubt based on like just uh, having conversations with you and the way that you phrase things and the way you talk. I can feel that self-doubt, but you also, I don't think you were convinced that you could do this. Like you sent me a message before this started 
I'm surprised what we accomplished. Like I knew this was possible. I know every single one of you guys on this call or listening to this call can do the same thing. It's just a question of making that decision of what's going to happen, right? Getting on the other side of that glass door, no matter like, no matter if I have to go through the chimney, if I've got to like climb out a window or go around, like there's just no way I'm not getting through. So that mental decision is something we all have the power to make. Like Dave made it despite the fact that he's dealing with all kinds of pain. He lost two days of the process, but he was, he did more. He did 11 sites, right? He went above what we had, we had talked about. And it, it doesn't matter that they're rough. You know what? Um, how many times have you ordered a service on, or you've done a Google search and you've like found some like crappy website, but you're like, Hey, I need this person to come. I, I'm not paying attention to the fact that their H1 tag isn't saying whatever. Right. I'm just like, get to my house. I, I need your, your help. Right. So you now have that possibility and you're going to polish these things over time and, you know, improve these rankings. So uh, once again, man, congrats. Um, I'm super happy for you, Dave. Do you have anything else you want to add? Anything else? Um, any, any more learning or tidbits that you can share with somebody who maybe hasn't made that, that transition yet? Um, yeah, I suppose a couple, you know, it, it's funny. It's like, I think one of the things when uh, you were mentioning about the uh, coaching call and like the four months for the enterprise, yeah, to be brutally honest uh, for Jill and I, neither of those were a factor for us in doing this. It was really just being called out on a zoom call by you um, because we know how much value you put into the group and, you know, lead generated and everything else. And, we didn't want to let you down. We didn't want to let other people on this Zoom call down. And we especially didn't want to let ourselves down because we feel like we've done that so many times. Um, you know, it's been certainly a bit of a challenge in trying to overcome some of those fears. Um, but at the same time, we're, we're grateful for actually getting over them and realizing that, yeah, we we need to take charge of our business um, that nobody else can do it. Um, we previously relied on some other people uh, to provide some things and we're just really disappointed and realizing that uh, we're not going to be able to move forward without doing things ourselves. Um, something else with relating to the coaching call that you had mentioned about was ironically um, some things that, I've had going on this week is I had to start stop. Well, I stopped into a, a pharmacy and um, before I went back there was briefly just looking at their uh, GMB rankings. It was kind of a random thing because they had this little like business card that was shoved in the bag. The first time I went there asking for a Google review. And so I took the heat map software, popped them up, just kind of looked around to see how their rankings were and stuff, you know, and just kind of curious because they were a, a small local business and really was all about wanting to support small businesses. So ran the heat map and, and saw that there was definitely some improvement. So I just scribbled a few notes on the piece of paper, printed it out, and then went in and started talking to the pharmacist that was there. And um, just, again, kind of really pushing outside of my comfort zone to, try and have an intelligent conversation with them about it in the process and not just GMB management like we talked about last week, but understanding your concept of it really all needs to go together. You know, they don't have a website at all. They just have a GMB. So it took maybe 10, 15 minutes and just started laying out all the various things about the heat map, um, what it means to them as a small business to be able to really start getting exposure even though they mentioned that some of their current customers are, of course, older folks that aren't necessarily internet savvy. I said, you know, unfortunately, you need to embrace the idea that with this technology, a lot more younger people are going to need a pharmacy. And what better way to get your small business seen, but to get that exposure in the technology that a lot of younger people are using and, and build it now. So... Um, I think it was just, it was a great conversation, you know, left him with a piece of paper, um, just talked to him about looking at doing some more GMB management and customization along with them considering building a website 
and that everything kind of needs to go hand in hand for them to really get the exposure and the ranking to yeah. increase the business. This is awesome. So, yeah. So it's like watching you transition in real time, man, from uh, <laughs> being sure. afraid to have this conversation to just like approaching someone and, and kind of getting out there. Right. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of momentum that exists in this, uh, in this business. You got, I, I want you to make sure that you, that you keep it grow, going, you know, not you, we make this be the new habit of how you act and, and interact. And I know that you, um, I know that by nature, you've told me before that you're introverted, right? By nature. And yeah. one of the things, um, you know, like there's a lot of different reasons I know psychologically why people are introverted. Some of those reasons are related to confidence and you've expressed lack of, of confidence towards certain parts of this business. And I'll tell you, when you become ultra confident in your ability to deliver for these people, any of that shyness or, you know, the introversion part of it that's related to confidence is going to be gone. It doesn't necessarily mean that, that you are introverted, but like, if I asked you to talk to me about motorcycles and what it's like to fix this, you're not going to have any doubts on, on at all. yeah, you can talk about it all day. Right. You do that same spot with this business model in a business model that is going to pay you um, a lot more than you could have as, as a motorcycle mechanic, right? Like that same confidence yeah. that you have towards that is going to come through this. And it, it's just like, honestly, Dave, it's, it's beautiful to, to see you going out and approaching a pharmacist about his GMB, right? It's like, it doesn't matter what happens with, with this individual, that, that shift that you've made is what's important here. Okay, and, and maintaining that shift, to, to lock that shift in, what you need to do is you need to do a lot of reps, okay? And right. it, you know, I think it's, uh, it's great to be having these conversations. You need to be balancing those, these with the fact that you've got 11 shoes on the shelf now. Some of them don't have laces, right? Some of them you still gotta like go in there and install the, the, the sole or whatever and get them cleaned up a little bit. So like, we got to make sure that those move down the track, but I do not want you to lose this mindset of like approaching these people because these are going to go hand in hand. Those are the two things you need. People that struggle that have been running this business model for years, they're usually missing one of only two things. One, they, they don't have sites or two, they're, they're like, they haven't themselves. They don't have the ability to go in and communicate about a sales conversation or they haven't solved that problem by hiring somebody else or whatever it be right so in one week's time it's almost like you've taken both of these horns and you're like i'm i'm in charge now right and i don't know if everyone else is seeing it that way but that's like i mean i'm locked in on you and that's what i'm feeling from where you were i mean, i know that we've been kind of having conversations for months until now and i just think it's amazing man I, i'm i'm this is this makes it exciting for me to do these calls when um, it kind of has this reaction when it when it has this impact, right? Because because honestly, I don't I don't need to, like you know I, I don't need to be doing these calls. I just I love I, I want to help you guys and to to realize that hey this is actually um, this is having an impact and this is making a difference. It makes me excited, man. I'm gonna probably have to like go run around the block and chill myself out after this call because. I'm stoked for you, man. And, and, and you can't wait. I think my chances of getting that white Russian we talked about a few weeks ago is, has gone up. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. Maybe, maybe even a camping trip at some point, a couple extra. Yeah, man. <laughs> right. Cool. All right. So um, anything else, Dave, we good. You got any questions? Uh, not at the moment. I'm sure as they come up, for sure, then uh, I'll certainly be asking, but you know, I don't want to dominate time either. I'm sure other people. Oh, yeah, I, I get it. And I think probably other people are getting a lot out of this too. So um, cool. All right. Well, let's talk. Let's talk with the rest of the, the people here. Um, does anybody have any questions? Anything that you get? Yeah, have one uh, Patrick Frankie Bardwell's asking what's good worrying for posts to get GMBs. I'm sorry. Can you, can you repeat that? I, I didn't. What is good wording? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing on the Indeed ads oh, or oh, okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. So um, what's kind of the script that we use when we're trying to get these GMBs? That's the question, right? So here's what we do. We'll post something like, um, hey, we need some pictures in this town. And then we will mention the niche. And we'll mention that this doesn't need to be like high quality. It can be done on a phone. That's fine. Okay. So, um, and then when they respond, typically what we're doing is we're saying something like, hey, these, these pictures have already been taken, but we do need help from another local, um, another local person. We make sure that we state an amount for the, the job. Like if it's on Craigslist, it's going to be $25 for this because that's really going to filter out the real photographers because these people are going to want like hundreds of dollars to come out and do like a photo shoot, if maybe more. I don't know. I've never hired one of those guys. So um, then we kind of like say like, hey, we still need some, 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 some local help. And, um, you know, it's not photography. We can let you know if, if another one of those jobs comes available, but it would be helping out a local company. And then um, we send them the postcard. Look, guys, um, sometimes the postcard is going to come and they're going to throw it away. Sometimes it's not going to show up. Other times it's going to come, you're going to stick it in, it's going to get suspended right away. No matter what happens with the suspension, if these people give you the, 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 the postcard, our policy is we're going to pay them 100% of the time because they're not in charge of the outcome of whether it gets verified or not. They did their job. I think we, I think we may, I'm not sure if this is true, but I'd be willing to pay people if they've done a lot of work for us and for whatever reason they haven't got received this postcard, if, if it's been like back and forth. We've had a couple situations where we've like paid people out just trying to make sure that, that we're good on our end, right? So um, we pay them with like Venmo or um, PayPal. We've got like the cash app. So we've got like three or four different ways, uh, Zelle. So we just let them know that, hey, we can pay you out any of these different ways. And, you know, it's worked out really well. A lot of these people, they're, the people that are willing to do this, a lot of times like $25, it makes a big difference to them. And, and a lot of these people have said, hey, can I get you more addresses? I know other people around, around the city, would it be cool? And, and for us, 100% of the time, yes, because we want to try to set up a bunch of GMBs in every city we go into. So um, uh, Graham just posted his, um, his sort of um, text or whatever content in the uh, Facebook group. So I'm going to post it here in this chat as well in the Zoom chat. I can get it to work. Yeah, I got it too. I'll, I'll post it in there. I got it. You got it. Cool. Thank you for that, Graham. That is. Yeah, thanks, Graham. You rock. And then another um, individual here, Dalton, he's on the call right now. He had some questions about GMB stuff and he was wanting to post in, in Lead Generate. It's, it's a lot of really, it's a lot long question. And so I don't know, Dalton, if you're available, I saw you kind of like exercise or something there if you want to bump on here and kind of ask some questions that you needed yeah sorry guys can you work. hear me okay I'm, I'm out for a walk <laughs> yeah um, yeah we, we got you dalton how you doing man good good how are you guys good yeah that's good yeah i had some questions about the gmb um i know a lot of people say you have to make a different email for every gmb but like i had a roofing and solar company so i've gone through quite a few different towns and cities and had my GMBs there and, and kind of, I've never had anything ever suspended but like I'm just wondering so I, I usually put everything under my one email and then after I get my GMB I'll make uh I'll make an email that kind of relates to that GMB so if I have like a roofing site I'll, I'll have my email to get it and then I add it another owner of another G uh, Gmail or whatever does is that fine like so, so here's the here's the danger that you run into, and it's not in the verification process, and it's not necessarily that you're going to get suspended. It's if you get suspended, they could go into that account and kind of like tear them all down at once. So, like, we pay for our GMB or our emails um, from from some service, but for a long time we got them, we just like made them ourselves. Um, so it's almost free. It, I mean, it can be free to get them. So I think with the level of protection that you get from separating these things out and the value that they have, it's 100% worth it. And in my agency, it is absolutely required for us to put them in different ones because I'm not willing to have them get torn down. I know that like maybe 
it's like six or eight months ago, there was like a GMB update and um, they went after like people that had more multiple like accounts in one. And a lot of people lost a lot of GMBs. And we, we had a few of those where they were in and we lost some of those. And of the other ones, we lost, we lost none. So Google is always trying to make connections between like if they see you doing something that's oh, a little bit. So say that for instance, what if you, you add a new email uh, like you make a new email, but they ask for your phone verification, your birthday, your name, your everything. Does that mean you get a different phone number for every single one then? Because that would just be like a, a way to get tracked back, I guess. Like I can't even use my phone number for anymore, but. Yeah, um, I mean, we, we use the same phone number multiple times. Um, I haven't heard of them connecting and suspending based on like a phone number connection. Um, I think, it, I mean, it, it would make sense that they could absolutely do it that way. But I, I think, I just think it's probably a lot easier for them to just like look inside a Gmail account than to try to like cross-reference phone numbers. I mean, they got like billions of accounts. Okay. So um, yeah, I would do it. Uh, I had another. I would, I would say I, I would be okay with the phone number being the same, but I, I absolutely would not use the same email. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, so every other email that I'd connect, I would just, I would just take off my main email as the owner and make a one owner for each of them. And then uh, I'm just getting started with lead generated here. Um, uploading everything to lead generated. You kind of cut out, you kind of cut out there. So I heard you say, yeah, you would set up everything uh, on, on one email and, and um, I would forward those emails to like, maybe some other email so that you can kind of have them. I mean, that there may be, even be some danger in that, but, and I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you said about lead generation. Yeah, I, I apologize. I froze up there for a second. I was just walking the door. It must have connected to my Wi-Fi. Um, I had one more question, Jeff. Do you know what that last question was that I had? Uh, part three, let me see here. Say a flooring company has many listings on Google or storefronts, like a corporate place. Is that, does that ring a bell? Cause this is okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so like when I, when I, uh, posted for like a GMB yeah, and, um, and I, I, I just, I never said I was servicing like their area. I was, uh, I just said it was a storefront and I service other areas. It got verified right away. Um, I noticed that. So if you have that verified right away as like sort of a storefront, but you also service other locations, um, and, and you take off the, the location, would it, would it suspend it or flag it right away? I don't, I don't think so. I think that's a pretty standard practice. Um, Cause, cause the GMBs do, do way, so I, I would just proceed GM with caution. Maybe somebody else on the call right. can like speak to that, that strategy. Um, but, but I think yeah. I'm about 75% sure it won't. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the GMBs for the storefronts, they look different. And then, so like, for instance, I was looking up like flooring companies and a lot of flooring corporate companies they'll have a storefront and then they have floor, uh flooring contractors their own, of their own they go out and then so when you look at the gmbs and i type in say flooring contractors those storefronts pop up at, at the flooring contractors too but only like one of them in the map pack and then the other two are flooring contractors so i don't know if that i don't really know how to ask that i guess <laughs> is would would you feel comfortable going into that niche if they uh I don't know if they um, if they have like storefront storefronts as well involved tied in with yeah. uh, also service based. Here, here's where I would struggle with it is if I'm going to get a lot of people calling and asking to come in and, and look at something, and then when we tell them that there's no storefront, then it becomes not a good lead because they're like, yeah. "Well, I want to be able to see it. Sorry, that's not what we're looking for." Do do the brick and mortar GMBs uh, rank better? Do you find? I, I don't think so. Um, Here's I've what I would do: I'd, I'd run some heat maps and see where they're weak in their in the map pack. Hey, that's you a good know. idea. Yeah, maybe, maybe like try to fill in the gap. If they're if they're really strong on one side of town and not on the other, then maybe you could capture. Especially if it's a larger uh, metro area, a larger population. Maybe if you captured the west, they already have the east, then you could sell them the leads from the west or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Idea. All right. Well, thanks a lot guys. I know they're uh, 
questions that are asked all the time, but GMB is such a finicky thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such an important part of the, the whole, you know, yeah. like the whole, the whole profile thing there. Right. So yeah, man, absolutely. Um, oh, did, did we answer all your questions to like, you pretty asked? much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot easier, I think, than trying to do it on, on text on something. I'm glad you got it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot guys. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, man. All right. So uh, do we have, Jeff, do we have any other questions that I've missed? I don't see any right here in the chat. Anybody else want to chime in? All right, cool. Um, if not, I don't. I don't necessarily have a, a, a lot prepared to like teach on. I was relying on more questions. Um, we can go through. We've got some some new stuff coming out. Uh, I'm going to share my screen here for a minute. All right. So let's go into this. This one here. Okay, cool. So we have some news. You guys can see my screen, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. So uh, for those of you guys who didn't see last week, we had the heat map, um, the heat map updates here where we can, we kind of had a, a redo on the user interface. We have the ability now to compare. Um, I understand that for certain GMBs, it's doing what's going on here. You can see where we're testing in here earlier. It, it's repeating the same GMB when you, you try to run it once and it will like throw it on there like five or six times. We found the issue, it should be fixed by tomorrow. So if any of you guys are seeing that, um, that should be taken care of. So just to kind of recap from last week, you have the ability now to kind of like hit these check marks and then click compare and it's gonna load you up like this. Um, with ours, with that issue where it's repeating, it's, it's causing some problems with, on, on this end of it. Um, but that won't be, a fact. I, that's only affecting a few people's GMBs for some reason. Another issue that people have been having is uh, their heat map loads in the wrong, like when we first load it, it, it loads in the wrong city, right? So we put in like our GMB or maybe the map URL and it's like choosing, you can see right here, I think it just did it for this one. Uh, maybe not, this is Tahoe, okay, that's where we wanna be. Um, but some of them, maybe it shows like Kansas, even though like this is in Nevada, right? So. Um, we've got that issue isolated and we're hoping to have that fixed in the next couple of days or so. Another thing that we have coming out, um, I think I shared it with you guys last week. Just give me one second to get this thing loaded up here. Um, so we, we've, we've been building in um, some cool email functionality that you guys have been waiting for for quite, quite a while, some of you guys. Um, so I'm gonna show you what this looks like. I'm thinking that this is gonna be live in your guys' accounts, um, probably in the next like four or five hours, if not then uh, tomorrow morning. So this is my test, uh, it's my test system here where we kind of do our build out. So this is how it's gonna work from now on. And you go down here to settings and you're gonna have an email option, okay? So what you can do is you can click over here and you can select your account provider. So AOL, Gmail, with Gmail, there's some special instructions that you're gonna to have to do to get this thing to work correctly. You're gonna to have to create an app password. That's the only way we've been able to get it to verify with Gmail. So once you add in this account, you're going to be able to use it and assign it to your different companies, right? So you can see this is like one of our test companies here and I can choose from my available email addresses. I can set up the sender name. I can set up the subject. So what this means is you're gonna be able to have your, um, you're gonna be able to have your lead gens with, if you wanna have a different email, a, a lot of you guys have asked for the ability to send leads from a different email, right? So that's gonna be in there. You can use one for each company. The same is gonna be true for reputation management. Okay, we've got the same system here, as well as for questionnaires. For questionnaires, because of the differences in how it's set up, it will be, um, you'll, you'll set it, you still have the functionality, you'll just set it in a little bit different area. Okay, so apparently I don't have, let me just make a, um, one of these real quick. So this could be welcome to our agency. And I'll type in here, um, we need a little info. If you guys haven't used this, this is great for as you onboard people. So this could be my name here, right? I'll set this up as Patrick Shannon. And then the text. Um, so when you submit a questionnaire, 
to the client, it's going to give them the option to, uh, there's a button, there's gonna be a button within that. And when they click on that, it's gonna take them to the spot where they can complete the questionnaire that you create. So um, I'll just put in here a client questionnaire. So that will show up as a button, okay? And then we can add in some fields, right? Add, add all these in. You guys can add in additional ones right here using our form builder, okay? So I'm gonna save this and if I had, let me see here, let me go back over here to this edit area. So you can see the sender email, I have this drop down here. So if I had added additional email accounts over in this email settings, then I could send that from there. So it doesn't need to come from me generated anymore. From now on, it could come from whatever email address that, that you want it to come from. Okay, so there's a couple caveats with this. Um, there could be some, some records that you're gonna need to adjust wherever your website is, wherever your email is hosted, which is usually where your website is hosted. So for instance, if uh, my agency is like patrick'sagency.com and I'm hosting patrick'sagency.com on Bluehost, then I may need to go to Bluehost and just add in what's called a text record, right? Or an SPF record. So what the internet is always doing when an email is sent is it's trying to determine like the level of credibility and validity of the system, okay? So when you go through and you set it up this way, um, there's a possibility that they could view this as less credible, right? Um, so there's a really good test that you can do You get to check the reputation. If you just do a search for spam tests, um, email, I think, spell email, right? Okay, so this is the one I like. So basically what you do is you copy this email address and then you send an email from wherever. So you would go into lead generated and you'll send yourself, this will be the, this is like send the questionnaire here or the lead here. Once you do that, you click on this button and it will give you some feedback. So you'll check your score and it will make recommendations for you. So it's gonna give you a one to 10 rating on, on like how good your email is, right? So we've taken care of things on our end to try to make it as high as possible for you guys. But you may need to make a couple small adjustments with that. But this is gonna give you guys a lot of different flexibility on being able to send out these emails for reputation management, as well as the questionnaires and lead management. You can do it on a company level for each, for each of those modules. The other modules that we didn't include, we didn't really see the need um, for emails to be being sent out, right, at this point. Um, we've got some ideas possibly for heat map where you could send it out from the system, but you could just as easily copy the link and then send it out from your own email. So we didn't prioritize that as high as, as like the leads and the reputation management and that stuff. Do, does anybody have any questions about this functionality here? It's making sense how this works. Okay, cool. All right. So let me get that out of there. All right, guys, we are at 7.20. I'm trying to keep these to about an hour. So one thing, apparently this has existed. I think most of us, I think Chrome is, is the most popular web browser. And I just realized this um, myself. And, and I think it's a fantastic feature that Chrome added in here recently. So there's two things that they added. I just wanted to kind of share this tidbit with you. Um, I haven't tested this on PC, I'm on a Mac, but you now have the ability, there's like a little drop down area and you can search through all your tabs over here which is kind of cool. So if I'm looking for like some Facebook tab or whatever, I can search through it through there. You can also be putting your stuff into groups. So you can see that I can, I have a group created here called LG. And if I want to, I can add these things into this group. So I could say, hey, move this into this group here and it'll put that kind of green line on it. And then if I just double click on this, it will, it will hide it and, it and I can name it, right? So makes it a lot easier to kind of stay organized with our, with our tabs. So I thought that was a cool thing. I know that not everybody is like a tech geek, but um, for me, my tabs get out of control. And I think, but I haven't tested this, that it's gonna save you memory to put things and collapse these groups because essentially if you look at my screen, you can see all the different extensions that I have running. So every tab I have open, those extensions are running on that tab and it will certainly eat through your memory when you have a lot of tabs open. And then I think when you collapse them, then it takes away from that. So. Um, just a little like tidbit in there to make things easier for you guys. And now you can see that it's going crazy there with that Facebook. Hey, we've got one more quick question, Patrick, from Adam. He's asking, is there any danger in linking between sites? I know it's a loaded question, but I'm sure you have a short answer. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, essentially what you're asking is, can you give yourself a backlink from one of your existing right. sites? You, you can do that. And I would just be careful, right? Like you may want to be tracking what you send yourself a link from. You know, what you don't want to do is you don't want to have like a lot of footprints between your stuff, which is why, you know, we have, the, there's the link circles and stuff like that, that exists, right? Um, we've done it in our agency. You know, a lot of our sites are, are really strong. And then when we build out a new one and we're maybe we're having a tough time getting it going, we'll send ourselves a backlink from our, from our own site. I would just use it sparingly. You know, um, you wouldn't want to, like, if you say like, hey, this like website A links to website B and C, and then website B also links to C and like things start looking a little fishy. I'm just like, I, that's why I say, I'll just use it sparingly. But as you get more and more sites, like, like, you know, we have hundreds of sites. So when we just like randomly throw one to another, then it's not that big a deal. Um, for you guys that are using different hosts and stuff, one of the things that, that we started using a couple of years ago that I would be recommending is this Cloudflare. It's free to set this up. So if you go to cloudflare.com, it's essentially going to give you like a free um, SSL if you go through this. It also protects your site and it also anonymizes the host because Cloudflare is a very popular service. So it kind of stands in between. You point your web host DNS at Cloudflare and then you and then Cloudflare connects. You point the DNS inside Cloudflare at your actual um, website, like wherever, like, I don't know if, I, if I'm explaining that right. So you go to wherever you bought the site, you point at the registrar. So you say you go to GoDaddy, you point that at Cloudflare for the DNS, and then you point Cloudflare at the host. And then when someone does a lookup, it shows Cloudflare instead of the actual host. So aside from that, it, they will protect you from like spam, from, from robots that are trying to like attack your sites and stuff like that. And because they're blocking some of this ro the, the, these like robots and spam, they, um, your, your websites will actually load fa faster because they're like blocking out part of the bandwidth that would be associated with, um, you know, like that's that, that like, you only have so much bandwidth and some of it's going to robots. And when you put them in there as the bouncer, it's no longer going to it, which means that there's more left for everyone else. That's essentially the theory behind how it works. I love it. We, it, it's, it's just like, it's going to protect your sites. There's no reason not to use it in my mind. So it's free to use. Um, any of your developers should understand how this works. And if not, then like you can just talk to their sales or, um, you know, read for 10 minutes and, and probably figure it out. Um, so do we have any, do we have any final questions here? That's all I see tonight, Patrick. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, we had a win. We had a win in our agency before we go. Um, you know, we had built some stuff out in San Antonio. And like Jeff said, we, um, we had this client now, like I think a year ago, he was at 1500 a month and, um, now he's at 9,500. And like, I think, uh, we're going to move into $11,000 a month now. Um, so I just want to share that with you guys about how things can change. And there's a lot of benefits to kind of getting, what, so Dave asked me a question here when he started this, this contest where he's like, hey, what do you think about this niche? And my response was, it's dangerous to build a bunch of sites in a niche that you don't know a lot about. But once you know and you're comfortable with the niche, then I think it's a really good idea to niche down and kind of like build them like all over the country or whatever, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of advantages to knowing the niche, knowing the pain points of the contractors, mm -hmm. um, knowing the types of content that you're going to need. Maybe there's some good backlink sites, um, all this stuff. And, and the challenges, I think, in each niche has its own particular flavor. And That's right. know, some of them can be a little bit more quirky than others. And it just kind of depends on what your, you know, um, you know, what your mentality is on how you can handle that. If, it, if it's a niche for you or not, you know, some of the ones that are going to be easier are not going to be as profitable, but if you're willing to put up with a little bit more, you have some more tolerance for shenanigans and whatever, you can make a little bit more money along the way, I think. And then we had another win uh, yesterday. We, uh, Patrick and I tag team, we played back, good cop, bad cop on a call and, and doubled another client to three grand a month, which was awesome. 
Yeah, yeah, that's another one. Um, you know, some of these some of these things that look like losses, when you kind of hang in there and you keep on pounding it on them, they, they turn into wins. So we had a client in um, Northern Virginia that he, we, like, he flaked on us after a while. We were sending the leads and then the winter came around and, and our niche that, that he was working in a seasonal. And then, um, but we still had some leads coming in and we found, you know, Jeff went and found somebody. And um, meanwhile, we had lost our client on the other side of the border in Maryland in the same niche. Okay, so we kind of lost two, two people I think in like January, December, somewhere around there, we kept on working on it. We knew that it was going to come back around. And, um, you know, the Jeff was able to find the first guy in Virginia. And then um, some, somewhere around that, along that way, the guy flaked in Maryland. And now we've got the first guy, he's taken both of them. We brought him on at $1,500 a month. And now, you know, after the conversation yesterday, he's at $3,000 a month. And we're, we, with the idea that we're going to reevaluate on April 1st. And we're actually probably April, going to be moving yeah. him between like four to 4,500 a month. Um, I just didn't want him to jump up so, so, so much. Cause I know he's, he's, you know, he's like a 24 year old contractor and I know it's a, it's a, it's a big jump and you know, you've got to always be managing the relationship with these people, right? We can always come back and we let it, we let him know, that, Hey, like, I think that this Maryland is worth 3000 on its own, but let's like the way this thing popped off so quickly, let's give it a little bit of time. I want you to be thinking about this. You're going to have to get some of your ducks in a row. Cause like he, he's overwhelmed, right? He, right yeah. now he, he can barely handle Virginia. And then we gave him Maryland and you know, his black father or something is going to come help him. With yeah. That you got to dig in and learn like where they're at, you know, even if it's worth more money, they might be the right, personally he has the right mindset he has the right mentality he, he's going in the right direction but he needs another truck he needs another crew it's going to take him time to get that kind of stuff so if you give them a little bit of runway so they can like patrick said get their ducks in a row then you might have a, a you know lifelong client that's going to be paying you big money rather than trying to get all your money up front and then you lose the right guy because you burned them out or whatever yeah you you guys it starts to be a little bit of a sixth sense when you can look at these clients understand what they're saying and, and we still make mistakes right you, you're never going to be perfect with it there's like people that we believe in and then they end up like not being that good right but um yep. you start you start to recognize some of these patterns some of this mindset are, are they answering the phone like what what is their attitude are you like this guy was telling us yesterday he's like i ask him one of the questions i always ask on these sales calls is where do you where where do you see this going like what what do you want to happen here let's talk about that because there's a lot of strategy adjustments based on that. So it's an easy question for them to answer. And, and he's like, look, you know, a few years from now, I'd love to have like 15 crews or 15 different people working with me with, with five crews. Okay. So what do you need to do to get there? What, what has to happen? Well, we're going to need a lot of leads. We're going to need a lot of business. Okay. So you can see that there's a lot of stuff coming in here. I think you and I, we both want to go in the same direction and I'm going to be patient with you. I believe in you. I, I like, I, I do. I believe in this guy just based on what he was saying. He's, he's done great so far. We don't need to like slam them to the wall, right? Let's, let's put ourselves in their shoes and let's think about what it is for them trying to, just like all of us, we're trying to grow our business and, and they're trying to do the same things, right? So if we can kind of have that empathy to understand where they are, be patient with them when it's, it, when it's right, right? Don't be pace, patient with some like, chump that's never gonna like be able to move the dial for himself because he's got his own like oh i overslept and i messed that appointment you start hearing language like that he's not your guy right like people that are serious about this this is what they're thinking about you know like dave the last week 14 hours a day he's focused on this business so that's the type of person that you want to find when you're looking for these people is like you want somebody who's serious about it who's like eat breathing and sleeping this stuff and it's just like when you ask them about their future, it's not like, you know, um, I want to work nine to five and, and just like make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. This guy's like, I want to take over the town. I want to have three jobs going at a time. Right. So just kind of like, listen for that. And, and if you hear that, then like, I'll give these people a little bit of runway, let them, let them get up to speed. This guy instantly went to $3,000 a month. He had no problem with it. He was, he was happy to do it. 
And this is the type of person that I think we can turn into, you know, um, a lot, a lot bigger client over time. And, and I'm motivated to it as well. One of the things I do is um, we'll go back and, and we'll share his story with our team, right? Let's engage the people on our team so that it actually feels like this is like, you're a part of this. And, you know, if they have some, if they have some emotion behind when they're building out the sites that help this and they understand who it's for and what their story is, maybe they'll be more excited to do it. And it's not just like a cog in a machine, right? So like the wins that we get, they're not from me and Jeff, they're from our whole team. So you wanna make sure as you guys build these teams, let these people know that this success is because of them too, because it is, right? So um, any other questions before we hop off here? If not, I'm gonna jump off. Cool. I just had two quick ones actually, yeah, Patrick. Sure. Um, one is, is it worthwhile to possibly be operating using a VPN when it comes to building other sites and emails and that kind of a thing, um, just so that you decrease the footprint? I think not. I think uh, at the level that we're working at, it's, it's fine. If you're building out a thousand sites and a thousand GMBs a month, then, then maybe you need to start looking at that stuff. Um, one thing to keep in mind is VPNs can be detected. They may not be able to determine what your real IP is, but when you go and you get a VPN, uh, usually what's happening is you're sharing the IP address, like you connect to the VPN and they've got like a whole pool of IP addresses, right? So they may have like a thousand IP addresses and everybody else that's using those thousand IP addresses are doing it to hide their IP address. So we don't know what they're doing, right? But we know that they don't want other people to know what their IP address is and they're going to go perform these activities. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try to build out our Google My Business properties and stuff like this, which is something that's based on trust, right? And we also know that Google knows that we're using a VPN. Like if you try to connect, some, some softwares and some things will say, hey, you can't do this because you're on a VPN. Like, right, I think Netflix right. sometimes has certain ways and there's like ways to get around it. But when you're focused on trust, I would not be messing with it. I think a better alternative is proxies. You can actually buy like a dedicated proxy, but that I don't think is necessary at all for the levels that most of us are, are operating at right now. And if you're not at that level, then you probably already solved that problem. So like almost it's like if you're asking the question, then you probably don't need it is my, is my, um, is, is my response. If you, otherwise you've already solved the problem if you need it because you're, but like, uh, you know, uh, Chad Kemble, I think he's doing like five or 10,000 GMBs a month and he's somebody that needs that type of stuff. But for us, you know, building like 10 sites a month, maybe we're setting up like 10 or 15 GMBs. We certainly don't need it in my mind. And I think you're just going to shoot yourself in the foot more than anything. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I just wasn't sure when, you know, talking about like GMB builds, having to use an email per one, um, you know, I wasn't sure if there was some of that anonymity that needs to potentially be done just to mitigate the right. flip issue. Yep. Um, and then same thing with emails. Is it something that really doesn't matter much between having a domain specific email and of course having to pay for it versus just generating regular Gmail email accounts per GMB? Now, uh, well, I think the difference is what we pay for is we pay for some, some Gmails that are aged um, and they're like, they're called PVA, they're phone verified aged emails. And there's different places that you can buy these. Um, part of it for us was just like a speed thing where I can just like pay, I don't know, like a hundred bucks and get a hundred Gmails. And it takes me like 10 minutes instead of like paying someone to create each one of those. Um, the phone verification, I think it used to be better. I'm, to be honest, I'm not sure. Like, I, I don't like, I just, I guess I have my doubts. I don't know if it's better or not. Um, I've heard that it is, but we've had issues too. So, and, and there's like hoops that you got to jump through when you're trying to sign into these things. Sometimes they're phone verified and like, maybe we didn't have access to like the phone number and it was just like, we lost it. Then we, I don't know. It, it was just like, there's a little bit of a hassle with it. I would say for you specifically with the amount of sites that you have now, I would just be like, create them on your own 
don't don't worry about it. What's the what's the simplest way? You know what you did this last week, Dave, is is you're kind of like, I have an exam that I'm not prepared for, and I need to cut off all the, the fat and just focus on what's important now, right? Right. That's that's where I think if everyone operated that way and we don't get go down these rabbit holes of uh, trying to get fancy with this stuff, then I think we'll, we'll, we'll move a lot faster. We'll, we'll move down a lot, a lot, a, a lot more, you know, like we, we like this, this, they, they say that it will take you like for a level one language. It, a lot of times it will take you like three to six months with, I think an hour a day before you're fluent and the fluency is defined as like, um, 90%. Like that's part of the equation. And then you can spend an additional like two years to get the last 10%. But like to be able to communicate, you probably need 60, 70%. It's the same thing in this business, right? Like you can go and create all this extra stuff and extra work for yourself, but like what's the minimum you can do to get the maximum result? Those are the questions that we need to be, that, that can be a mantra. For me, that's my, my mantra a lot. I'll write down, I've got like a thousand things that I could do today. And I've got eight of them listed on my whiteboard over here. It's like, what's the minimum I can do to like the most important things I can do now? Because this business never ends, right? And we can, I can come up with a million things to improve my, my ranking on stuff. But most of the stuff, it's going to be very negligible if, if, if like meaningless, right? So trim the fat, get into this like cram exam mode and just do what is necessary now, right? Like, we don't need, we don't need VPNs. Like, um, it's just like, what's the quickest way? Someone's your, your boss is going to be breathing down your neck. If you don't finish this a week from now, let's trim the fat. Let's get into that, like almost panicky mindset of trying to get this thing done. Right. Absolutely. Cool. Cool. And then, uh, one other quick question is, uh, with lead generated in the reputation area, um, in the feedback tab, um, the notifications, we talked about this a few weeks ago about um, that's where one would go ahead and place all the emails that one is wanting to have it sent out to when feedback comes in. Right, yep, right here, right? Just, yeah, just kind of a side note, is there any way we have access to modifying the template that this sends out from? Um, one, because it always seems like it comes from a lead generated, not necessarily our own specific personal agency. And then the other is I noticed that in the verbiage, um, just a side note, but it always refers to hello, sir, in the, in the beginning of the email uh, that's sent out. And so if we start working with some female clients, um, it would just make it. I, got you. I understand what you're saying. So yeah. Uh, it sounds like there's, there's two parts here. One is how to edit, or maybe this isn't part of your question at all, or maybe there's three parts here. So you like, for, let me just go through this. And I think I'll answer all the questions, whether this is one or not, you can edit the funnel here by going through and changing this stuff. So I think you already knew that. Yes. The second, thing, yeah. the second is, um, when I shared what I shared today with the email address that it's coming from. So when you set up uh, I don't have it open right now. Let me see if I can find it. Um, this. Okay, so back over here. Okay, so this system that we're putting out here, when you set up an email, you add an email. So like I said, this is not available now, but I think it will be, it, it certainly will be in like the next 12 hours, if not the next four to five hours. You're going to have the ability to add an email address and then you make the association to that email address with the company here for, for on, a mod, on a company level and on a module level. So for reputation management, these are the two companies I have in here. So I would add an email address and maybe I've got like timmystreeservice.com. So I put in here my Timmy at timmystreeservice.com and I, and I say, hey, this is the email address I wanna use for this one. And that will be used for all parts of the, um, for, for the, the emails that come out for reputation management for that specific company. So the third part of your question is there is a um, feedback that's being routed. Like if the feedback comes in, it's being routed. There's like a standard email template that's being used and there's no place to edit that, right? Yeah, correct. Because basically it's when I test the system, 
I send an email to myself as though I was the person that filled out the feedback and then lead generated sends an automated system email to anybody that's on that email list. Yeah. <clears throat> so when I look at the email that arrives, so if I was the client, when I look at that email, um, it comes from lead generated as opposed to it looking like it could come from my own personal agency. Right. And in the email template, it always addresses it as, you know, hello, sir, or something of that nature. Yeah. So it'd be nice to just change it if we then, you know, have female clients. So it's a little bit more gender neutral. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess one of two things needs to happen here is like um, either I need to give you guys a way to edit that template or it, it would be easier if you just got male clients only. <laughs> <laughs> No, we'll get that. We'll get that set up so that um, so that that can be edited as well. That that was just a slip on our part, and I like great catch because I hadn't even thought of that email. There's just this is a this reputation management has been a complicated piece to build um, with all the different ins and outs. I think Laurent was was one of the people like allowing it to be in different languages, all the different parts and pieces too. So. Right. Um, We'll certainly give you guys a way to, to have that email functionality and create your own template for um, for that. So that, and not only making it like gender neutral, but also making it so that it can be in any language too. Because I know that, you know, our people around the world are certainly gonna want to be able to have that template sent out in, you know, non-English speaking countries too. Yeah, that and the other final piece, as I mentioned was, uh so that it could look like it was coming from our own personal agency yeah. as opposed to lead generated itself. That will be handled by this. So that part of it will okay. be solved tomorrow. Got right? it, okay. You'll be able to add this in here and then anything from reputation management is gonna come from whatever email account you associate with that company. So okay. the reason we did it this way is that, um, you know, if it, if like we, we want like the review request to come from like, Timmy's tree service.com, not lead generated.com, right? So we gave you guys the ability previously with the SMTP. So we've just basically done a huge upgrade to this, making it easier for you guys to add, making it a little bit um, more robust, and then giving you guys more, like more of a dynamic nature for how these are assigned. So it can be company level, module level, have kind of like a management area. So tomorrow, look for this inside settings. If you like, click into here and set those up. We've got a script for all you guys that have added those, your accounts will automatically be added in here. So we've kind of like have that transition plan already set up for you guys. It's just a question of, of loading our code in there. But uh, yeah, Dave, I will get that on our feature list and we will make sure that we get that added in so that you can control, have an email template for that. Cool, sounds good. Thanks, Patrick. You are welcome. All right, team, any, any final questions before we hop off here? I think they all got answered. Graham was asking about mass emails. I think you, you covered that, right? I kind of got distracted there with another question, but I think you answered it. So I think we're good. Okay, cool. Right on. So uh, once again, awesome job, Dave. Hopefully you guys can find some inspiration in this. If he can do this with, with like, um, you know, he doesn't have a tremendous amount of experience. He is dealing with like health issues. He was someone that was lacking confidence. He lost two days. This is what he did. So let that be a challenge to all you guys that, that are there and, and you, you need this. Like, um, you know, I'll certainly do some more of these challenges. You guys like, you know, Dave has been on almost all of these calls. So um, the people that are in here kind of contributing to this stuff, I'm going to do my best to try to like um, help them go faster too, right? Like not that I'm going to leave, try to leave anyone behind, but um, you guys that are in here participating that, that are, that are, you know, I think a lot of people get stuff out of this because of your contribution, Dave. And, and you know, it may not be like um, you were trying to, you're trying to make this contribution to get your business to rise, but just by speaking up and, and putting yourself out there a little bit, like everybody else benefits from it. So um, thank you for doing that. I know that it required you to be vulnerable here. And um, I, I think that's awesome. Every time you get outside your comfort zone, it grows and keep us updated on the pharmacist, man. Um, hopefully you can turn that into a little bit of money coming in for you guys. And um, also send me that tomorrow. Send me, send me your, your, what your plan is for the next week. Set yourself a yep. goal and go get it. 
anybody else that wants to share that in fear of ruining my inbox, um, I'll give you guys some feedback if, uh, if you need some ideas of like, let's, let's, there's no reason why everyone on this call can't set a weekly goal and then go get it, write it down, get focused on it. And then, and then accomplish it just like Dave did. All right, guys, we'll see you in the group. Everybody stay safe and uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. See you, Brian. Chasing results. That might be <clears throat>